Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. In this video, we're going to look at an example of JSP application with JDBC. So here is an example of student data entry application that have basic crude function such as create or insert, update and delete. So user can insert data by fill up the text field for ID, name and branch and click on the insert button. Then, if user want to update information on certain data, user can select and edit the existing information and click on update button. If user want to delete any data, user can select and click on the delete button on the specific row. Next, we're going to look at how to develop this application. Okay, this is the basic step to connect a database to a Java application that we have learned at the previous video on Java Database Connectivity. So basically, we will follow these steps in order for us to develop the Java application. Before that, let's look at the structure of our JSP application. Basically, I'm going to use only one file for the code function. So the JSP file will contain open connection code, statement code, presentation code, and also close connection code. Alright, in this first step, we need to import the API package that contain the JDBC classes needed for the database programming. So most often, we use import.java.sql.star. Next, we need to initialize a driver so you can open a communication channel with the database. In this application, we're going to use Apache Derby as the database. So we need to actually create a code something like this. So first, I create a variable string DB URL with the information of Apache Derby data source. So this is the database name. And then I create a user variable, a password variable, and also lastly the JDBC connection object. This is derived from the connection class and using a method from the driver manager and also passing the DB URL, user and password as the parameter. Next is create a statement object. So this step requires using an object of type statement or prepared statement for building and submitting an SQL statement to the database. So in this application, we create an object prepared statement from the prepared statement class and use the connection object to build and submit the insert SQL statement as it shows here. So I'm using insert into student which is the table name values. So this is actually three column attributes in the table. So we have ID, name and also branch. So here, if you look at the next line, is I'm retrieving the value for ID, name, and branch by using the request.get parameter method. So this will be retrieved from the form, from the insert form. So next is actually the execute update, which is the next step. So this is for the execute SQL query, which is exactly after the SQL statement. So the execute update method should be used if the statement results in a single update count or no update count, such as SQL insert, delete and update. You also can use the execute query method if the execution produces a single result set, such as SQL select statement. So in this case, I put the execute update method right after the declaration of the variable. In the step 4, we process or extract data from the database using the result set query. So we can use the appropriate result set .get method to retrieve the data from the result set as shows here. So here I'm using result set rs statement.execute query I'm selecting all the data from the student object and then I'm retrieving all the data from the 
table in a while loop. So we retrieve the data by column name according to the data type. As you can see here, get int. This is the first attribute. Get string name, and then the third one is get string branch. So all this data will be displayed in the update form. Finally, in step five, we need to clean up the environment. So basically, you should explicitly close all the database resources as what we have used before. So the first one is we need to close the result set. Second one, we need to close the statement. And the third one, we need to close the connection to the database. So it's also advisable to use the try catch function okay, to catch all the error message if necessary. Okay, here an example of student project data entry that I have created in the NetBeans. So basically everything is in only one page. So you can actually put the action for the form, insert or update or delete. Okay, you can put like this if the action not equal to null and action dot equals insert and do all the insert statement. Else, if action not equal to now and action dot equals update, you run the update statement. So this is the complete application in one page. You can insert student data, update the data, and delete the data. That's all for now. I hope that you can develop JSP application with database successfully. For more details and example on Java JDBC, please reach chapter five in my Google site. Thank you.